Good afternoon. We're going to talk today a little bit about setting up a still life and painting glass, uh, which is not all that difficult once you learn how to do it. Uh, I thought I'd talk a little bit first about how I set up a still life and uh, do it very simply. I had a very expensive digital camera years ago that I used. It was a 10 megapixel and I thought that was just great. I learned recently that my phone has a 12 megapixel camera on it, so that's all I use now for taking up shots or setting up uh, still lifes. What I'll do is set up down in my workshop, actually, where I can turn out all the lights and there are no windows, and the only light is from the spotlight that I put on the, uh, on the setup. I will then take maybe a dozen photographs or so, bring them all up, put them into the computer, take a look, pick the one that I think has the prospect of being the best composition and then I'll insert that photograph into Word, use the uh, drawing tools that are part of that program and do the cropping necessary to bring it down to the composition that I might like and this is the one that uh, I'm about to start. I'll then make a PDF of that, take it down the street to the printer and have them make a large in this case 20 inch wide, since the other color paper is 22 by 30, there's that same photograph done in a large uh, in grayscale on very lightweight paper. So then I can take it and transfer it onto watercolor paper. And I do that simply with a uh, transfer paper, a graphite transfer paper. Uh, Lauren McCracken, with whom I've taken a workshop in this kind of technique, uh, uses a projector and he will project and then do the drawing with that. I uh, bought a projector and it doesn't work all that well, so I still use the, uh, the Sarrel uh, paper. Put it on and make any adjustments that I need to make for, uh, for instance, here, you see that that picture is a little bit off of vertical. And so when I put the transfer here, I copied that and straightened it up so it's in the right position now for uh, the painting. The other thing I do is go back to my photograph and I will, using crop and expand, make a bunch of details. So there's the marbles, there's the books, there's the lace. And I now have a collection of lace that I've been putting together over a period of years. The amount of show up in my paintings. There's the picture, there's the lace at the background, and so that gives me a little better idea of what those abstract shapes are that I'm supposed to be painting. And uh, there it is, so we'll see how that comes out. I try to make the edges uh, even number of inches, so when I'm making the frames, uh, it works out okay. So that's how it gets onto the watercolor paper. And the uh, thing I've learned, what I like about doing still lifes, is that you get to eat the props after you've finished and set things up. In this case, grapes. So this is the photograph that I took for the one that I'm going to do the glass on today. You can see the red lines, which is where I transferred the image onto the watercolor paper. I took a series of classes years and years ago when I first started with uh, uh, James Scott uh, Morrison. Jim Morrison was uh, a water, local watercolorist. He's now deceased. But he uh, gave a, a series of courses at Blue Ridge Community College, which I took. And he said, always use a red ballpoint pen when you're transferring this. Because he said, I'm in the middle of doing it. My wife, Susan, will come in and say, do you want pork chops or chicken for dinner? And when I go back, I forgot where I was. And so with the red pen, I, I know exactly where I was. So there's the transfer. Now, sometimes instead of going around the corner to the printer and I want to make it bigger, I will take the, the, draw, uh, the, the photograph, make three copies so I have four of it, do the cropping to a quarter, print them out, paste it up together, and that gives me a big one. Marble, a fabric, lace, uh, just a variety of things. And by the way, that carafe is one that I borrowed from uh, Suzanne, 
who's the owner of the gallery of flat rock. Okay, so now we have it transferred onto the watercolor paper. I've already started doing uh, part of this, so we can see how just the glass goes. And there's the detail that I'm going to use today for uh, doing that glass. I've already put the dark background in, and uh, I've already done the grapes, and I've already done the, uh, the marble. Again, you can see the adjustment that I made. This marble is kind of on an angle. I've taken and straightened it up so that it's consistent with the, the, the direction of the, uh, of the carafe and, and the glass. Now, I have already put some masking fluid to save the whites. There's no white in uh, watercolor that you can use. There's a, a white gouache you can use sometimes. <clears throat> but you won't be able to see it, but there are a number of places in here where it's a little shiny. And that's where I have put masking fluid in to protect the white here, a line here, uh, even this area which is reflecting the marble into the bottom of the glass. I put some masking fluid on there to, to give that protection. It gives me that pure white. So, why don't we start painting. And I will take one of my favorite Escoda brushes. This was from Sterling Edwards' workshop years and years and years ago. It's a toilet paper roll with paper towels wrapped around it. It's just handy to have next to take excess uh, water off. Did a workshop with uh, Ann Abgott at one time, and she said that water is the railroad tracks on which the uh, paint finds its way. And so if you're going to have an even blast of paint, Use a uh, use a little bit of water in there so it will flow. And I can see I've got two different reds in there. I've got one that's a bit darker up at the top, and so I'll use some alizarin for that, and maybe even put a little purple or violet into it. That may be too much. And then this lighter one, I'll just start to drop in down here at the bottom where that lighter red is. And then I'll take some of the Darker. And there are some grapes in there that are being reflected in the glass. These grapes are being seen uh, in there. take some of that out and lighten it up where that little light spot is. Remembering that the watercolor is going to wind up being some percentage lighter when it dries than it is when it's wet. little darks up in that area. <clears throat> I took a workshop with Lauren McCracken a couple of years ago. He's one of my idols in, in this kind of work. And, and he handed out a little um, deep well palette kind of a thing that I've going to step up from 
uh, it's really kind of small and it was plastic and it uh, really didn't work too well. So I thought about, since I like porcelain because it doesn't stain and I can clean it easily, uh, these little porcelain cups where they serve sauces in a Chinese restaurant and so on, went online and ordered a half a dozen, which I have mounted some of them onto a, a piece of hardwood. And what I've done is mixed three different uh, blacks in here, very dark, from darkest, medium, and, and light. And we'll see if they're still the way I want them. Yeah, that's nice. Dark one. It's still, still a little dark. So I'll bring that down a little bit. Should be the lightest. And that's still dark. The uh, Daniel Smith Company, as I understand, is coming out with a, uh, a black called McCracken Black after <laughs> Lauren McCracken. It's not out yet. <clears throat> He's got a special formula. I've forgotten what it is now, but I've been using uh, Payne's Gray, which has uh, some blue in it. And I like that little blue in the background. Um, yeah, you can see a little bit of blue in that. Okay, um, let's put some on here. Since I've already done the background, it makes it easier to understand why I'm putting dark on the glass because in effect you're seeing through it to what's in the, in the background. I have down in my wood shop I've got a piece of black velvet, and I use that as the backdrop for uh, photography since it doesn't pick up any highlights and, and sheen and so on. So what I'm going to do is, this is a glass we got someplace that had the, um, the bar or whatever the logo on there. I'm not going to put that in the, uh, in the painting, but I'll put some water on there so that there's a place for the and I'm gonna start with a medium in there. You can start to see where I've put some of the masking in there. It's um, giving me those little lines. Because you might see that it's a little darker where it's just against the uh, level of the wine than it is farther up. So I'm just letting that bleed uh, wet into wet and not giving me a, a hard line. I'm keeping a little bit there because there's a little bit of light red in there that's the, the top surface of the wine. And I'm also going to save the edge there. some of that out where the tabletop, the marble in this case, is located. And 
And again, I remember Sue Archer saying, create a painting, don't reproduce a photograph. Kind of giving the impression that it's picking up the reflection of these grapes. Good old Escoda rigger brush, which draws a very fine line. I'm going to put a little gray tone on this, but the masking is still on it, so let's take the masking off. Let's see where I saved the weights. That masking fluid is not unlike rubber cement. It protects the white of the paper, but it comes off fairly easily with one of these renewer things. These um, Tombow, Tombow, it's a, a brush as well as a an end to it, and for getting some fine lines sometimes, are the things to use. It's actually watercolor.
this is uh, meant to be marble and that's what's reflecting here so I need to put a little whoops not that much a little indication that there's some pattern Taking a little bit of white gouache and I'm picking up what have been the highlights of the, of the grapes in the reflection just to give that idea that it's, uh, that's what it is. The other trick when everything is dry and you do a little final, uh, years ago the Western district of the Watercolor Society of North Carolina had a regional event here locally and we had Jim Emerson, James Scott Emerson, um, Morrison come in and do a little demo and he talked about, he, he did landscapes, if you want to push the mountains farther back in your painting, they look like they're too far forward, mix up a very weak solution of white gouache and put it over the mountains and it dulls them down and pushes them back. I took that and I've used it now for years with um, on glass to give that little bit of sheen that you can still see through to what's in behind it. And so I will take some white gouache and a, a very weak solution of it and test it and see if I've got it white enough. And then just it may not have been just enough, but and then when that dries. It'll look like some machine on the glass, but you're still seeing through it to what's uh, what's in behind it. Glass. Oh. 